Welcome back. Uh, well, uh, the SGX Nifty's indicating will have a bit of a gap up, 20 point higher. Yesterday, the market did trap shorts in last hour and had a bit of a bounce, but uh, that was courtesy reliance and a couple of uh, large banks like HDFC Bank and Kotak Mahindra Bank. Uh, but uh, that's helping the index. So, can that continue? We have Ashwini Gujarat, Sudarshan Sukhani, and Mitesh Thakkar now joining us. Uh, good morning, Ashwini. How, how will you approach trade today? Well, good morning, and uh, we're again getting close to uh, a boundary. And my sense is that uh, at these boundaries of 10,600 and, you know, 11,000, 11, 980, you have to be ready to sell, which means that, uh, you know, once the market starts to show you those sort of signs, uh, you probably need to go with, the, uh, you know, playing the reverse because follow through remains missing and, you know, these four or five stocks, you know, beyond a point it will be difficult. So any uh, zone between 10, 980 to about 11,020, you have to be ready to sell and basically uh, get ready for uh, trading the extremes. Bank Nifty as well, uh, I think at higher levels, maybe uh, 27, uh, 500, uh, five, uh, 20, uh, 7, 500 to about 700, it's likely that even that turns from there, maybe today, maybe tomorrow after the policy, etc. But uh, basically, we are at the upper end of the range and there's no sense in trying to preempt a breakout. Okay. Well, uh, the, the, but the range has been staying on for quite a bit and it's getting narrower and narrower. Uh, good morning, Sudarshan. Uh, what are your thoughts on the indices and uh, would you play for a breakdown or a breakout at all? Yeah, good morning, Lata. You know, yesterday we were all bearish. Then the markets uh, turned and uh, moved up 100 points. And this is why the markets are such an exciting place to be. They do whatever they want and we just have to follow them. My own view remains that this market is looking for ways to go down. Now, clearly it's not doing that. And we have come back to that strong resistance level of 10,950. But I would stay with my uh, short positions until and unless the market proves that it has crossed that threshold and actually moved up. So it's a difficult position to be in. The market is going up and we have short positions, but that's how we will do it today. Once the market confirms we are wrong, we'll change our view. As of now, I expect as a positional short, markets to be down in the month of February. Okay, I guess, that, you know, that point is valid because uh, yesterday we saw a complete carnage, especially in the mid-cap space. We've seen selling both from FIs and DIIs. Let's get Mitesh Tucker's view as well. Mitesh, hi, good morning. Uh, do you reckon a breakdown is coming anytime soon and could it be in the month of February itself? Good morning. So yesterday we had a view that we'll buy on declines because uh, the expiry day and the budget day rally had uh, kept intraday charts uh, and averages in a rising mode and we said 10,820 would be a good level to explore long so we had a bottom around that level. As of now, on the broader range, I still don't believe that there is a signal of directional movement happening immediately. It could happen towards the end of the February or middle after the mid part of the February but as of now, I don't have a signal of saying that so I'll assume that the broader range of 10,980 to about 10,660 still remains and therefore yes, around 10,950, 960 would uh, lighten up long positions and explore some shorting with a 30-40 point kind of stop loss on the nifty. Uh, but uh, I'm not looking at a breakdown below 10,660, neither I'm looking at 10,980 being taken on the upside, at least for the next uh, few days. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see how things pan out. It is looking like it's getting narrower and narrower. Uh, Ashwini, what would your stocks be? Well, stocks on the uh, upside uh, remain uh, some of the stronger uh, retail banks. So, HDFC Bank is a buy with a stop of 2080, target of 2140. Kotak is a buy with a stop of 1260, uh, target of 1295. RVL Bank is a buy with a stop of 588, target of 610. Meanwhile, Adani Power is a sell with a stop of 42, target of 36. GSFC is a sell with a stop of uh, 95, a target of uh, 88. I haven't included those FMCG, Bata and Jubilant, etc. because uh, they rallied quite a bit yesterday and may not be <coughs> great buying opportunities today. Okay, fair enough. <coughs> uh, uh, so, Darshan, you have Bajaj Finance on your list. That's been one NBFC, of course, doing well. Uh, talk us about that and, of course, uh, rest of your stock calls. 
Yes, you are right. It's one NBFC which is doing well and outperforming and going with the market. So, Bajaj Finance is a buying opportunity. I must point out that the Nifty itself is at a difficult position. I have already explained that. So, uh, <coughs> just focus on mid caps. Bajaj Finance, Britannia, another FMCG which is breaking out from a very attractive bullish pattern, promising much higher levels. That's a buy. And Tech Mahindra, Techm is a buying opportunity. IT is doing well and Techm is outperforming there. So, the focus is on stocks, not an, on any index view. Three buying ideas and two short sales, Ultratech Cement, which is already uh, going and breaking support levels consistently. And GSW Steel, same story at the lows. So, focus on stocks and let the index be. <clears throat> All right, focus on stocks. Amitesh, you have a couple of banks on your list, Kotak, RBL Bank, etc. But would you also add access to that list? Because, you know, it's seen quite a bit of delivery-based buying ever since its numbers. Yeah, so excess has been on the buy list earlier, you know, especially after the numbers when the stock managed to get past the 675 range. Yes, I think, you know, if it consolidates or gives a mild pullback to the averages, I would still consider it as a buy because the structure still remains positive. But for the timing, I have buy on Kotak and RBL. I'll cover them. Kotak is a buy with a stop at 1260 for targets of 1295. And RBL is a buy with a stop at 582 for targets of 618. And uh, uh, I, that apart, I also have a buy on IGL with a stop at 289.5. I would look for targets of 305 here. And a solitary sell that's on HPCL where the indicator setup is negative. That's a sell with a stop at 231.5 for targets of 215. Oh. Okay. All right, gentlemen, thank you very much. Uh, we've got lots more stocks questions, uh, but uh, let's start with our results analysis as well. Uh, we have a bunch of results that have come out, and Titagar Wagons was one of them. It posted a good set of third quarter results. Uh, earnings were boosted by the de delivery of two new vessels, while the shipbuilding vertical also outperformed. The key question now is the run rate of order inflow and execution run rate. And uh, to ask to uh, apprisers of all that, we are joined by Anil Agarwal, the CFO of Titagar Wagons. Uh, good morning, Mr. Agarwal. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, well, actually, that's what uh, investors will want to know. It's a very good revenue performance. Uh, if you can tell us, uh, uh, describe a little as to what went so right in the third quarter and how much of that carries on into the fourth. Yeah, good morning. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, as you can see that the third quarter results have been a bit impressive as compared to the previous quarters. But I would say this is just the starting point. Basically, if you see today, we have an order backlog of almost like 2300 crores in Titagar mm. and uh, backed by, you know, 5000 wagons order, which we got only in the month of December, the execution of which has just started mm. in the month of January and it will continue at a good run rate till March 2020. Mm. So with uh, sufficient orders in hand, I would say this is just the starting point of the good numbers and going forward, uh, the company <coughs> will be able to deliver good quantity of wagons resulting into higher turnover and higher profitability. Now what orders are these? Are they all wagons, this 2300? Uh, out of this 2300 crore order book, uh, almost around 2000 crore is uh, from the wagon business and around 300 crore is uh, from the non-wagon business which includes like passenger trains, uh, EMU and MEMU, sub building, train electricals and all that. Okay. okay. Uh, Mr. Agarwal, good morning. Can you translate that to revenue for us? Uh, what kind of run rate do you hope to see per quarter based on these 5000 wagon orders that you're currently sitting on? Sure. So as of now, the wagon orders which we have received from the Indian Railway, the last date of delivery is February 2020. Yeah. So uh, hopefully uh, uh, part of that quantity will be executed by March 19 and the balance will get execute, executed during March uh, during the FI20. Yeah. And uh, this uh, 300 crore non-wagon business orders are concerned. So I would say uh, partly will get executed in FI20 and the balance will go beyond FI20. So, in terms of a revenue growth, what could we expect? I mean, nine months of FY19 has been stellar. You've almost doubled your revenues. Uh, what kind of uh, sustainable growth would you be penciling in for FY20? As I said, uh, you know, the, uh, like um, uh, the wagon business order book is ar around 2,000 crore and which is executable till March 20. So, okay. it's basically the 15 months. So that can be that can be taken as an average number. Okay, uh, you know, Mr. Agarwal, we are heading into election season, and perhaps not too many decisions will get taken between April and maybe June, July, uh, uh, till a new railway minister and defence minister are in place. Uh, for you, which is the most crucial ministry? Is it uh, railways much more than defence uh, and 
uh, what is the visibility? Are there any more tenders you are expecting from uh, railways? Uh, what was the order flow and uh, leftover orders uh, from railways? Yeah, definitely, you know, the railway ministry is the most important because uh, till now the majority of uh, turnover is coming from the railway business. Mm. And uh, as, as you might remember, you know, the last tender was around 21,000 wagons out of which Indian Railway has finalized only 10,000 wagons. So balance they are yet to decide. So hopefully uh, they might come out with a new tender for those balance to uh, twelve thousand wagons, which uh, they would like to decide very soon. So that is that is the thing which is pending. And apart from that, I don't see any other tender coming in before elections. Okay. And what about the shipbuilding business? Uh, what kind of opportunity do you see there, say over the next one to two years? And what's the order book like? Uh, as of now, you know, the order book is not very, very high. But basically, the first order which we got, the um, um, majority of the, the, those orders got executed. But today, today we don't have any order, uh, substantial order book. But we have participated in the various tenders and I don't, I, I doubt whether these tenders will get finalized before elections or not. But parallelly, what we are doing, we are talking to the other last ship builders like Garden Beach and all that and uh, trying to get some some work on the job, uh, job contract basis and like that. So if we, we try to conclude that there could be a substantial inflow of orders also in the shipbuilding division as well. All right. Uh, Mr. Agarwal, it was a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you very much indeed uh, for joining us and giving us more colour about your results. And uh, I think the big takeaway is that up until 2020 March, mm. uh, there are enough orders, 15 months of uh, orders. And one hopes, yeah. of course, that uh, uh, the wheels in the ministry, railway ministry will chug along and provide more. We have to take a break on that note. But uh, still ahead on Bazaar, morning call. Uh, Prakash Diwan will be joining us to analyze some of the companies that came with numbers and give us some of his long-term stock bets.